Hi, I'm Willow Polson, and I'm on the Board of Directors and the Display Committee and several other committees of the Northern Mariposa County History Center, which you see around me right now. Uh, and as I work on the displays and the operations of the museum, it occurred to me at one point, um, maybe other people would like to know how this stuff is done. What happens behind the scenes at a small museum um, and other small museums, not just this one. So I thought I'd go around and talk to other museum folks and uh, get some information about that and show you what I do, how I do it, and, and the rest of us here at the Northern Mariposa County History Center here in Coulterville, California. So welcome to my new series. I hope you enjoy it. So something that we deal with a lot here is displays and the display cabinets and how they go together or don't go together. <laughs> and as you're about to see, um, there can be things as, it's an old building, things settle um, and they don't quite fit as, as they originally did. But it was interesting, I went over to Columbia and discovered that they do some of the same things that we do, which I didn't know that until I went over there. So you'll see that in just a minute. Um, these old cabinets though are screwed into place in sequence uh, and, and they can be a bit challenging. You have to unscrew these in order to get in there and make any changes, um, but some aren't fitting quite right. So that's what I'm working on today. So here we are in the Barrett room and what I'm doing today is, well, <laughs> it's, these, these glass pieces here um, were handmade presumably by Frank Barrett back in the day, and the floor has since settled, and thus uh, every one of these cabinets is a little wonky. <laughs> so what I'm attempting to do is uh, sand these edges so that the cabinets fit better uh, on this uh, case here. Um, it's <laughs> I, Maybe it's a fool's errand, I don't know, but <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm up to today. Uh, it actually did work. I just sanded just a tiny bit. You can see my mark here. What I did is I took a piece of paper and where the paper stopped, I made a mark and then used the sander outside to take just a little bit off. And hey, it actually worked. So this isn't going to just like bind up like these have been doing. What? Here, by the way, here's what's up on top of these cabinets. <laughs> it's... Uh, you know, I mean, they're nice cabinets, you know. Um, just when we were taking these off and trying to put these all back together <clears throat> during the opening of the Barrett Room, uh, we actually had to take this trim piece out, which is why these nails are still here. You need to rework this trim piece and put it back like uh, there's a trim piece here so that it is a nice cabinet front. Um, but it, it just wasn't happening on the day. So we're like, you know what, we're just going to leave it out for now and come back to this later, but yay, it actually worked. There we go, last screw, nice. This is uh, one of my displays, it's about agriculture, I need to get a sign in there, but uh, there's these cool old flower sacks from uh, Merced Mills, which is down uh, the road just a little ways, and then we've got these cool old uh, fruit juice and preserved plums in glass. Uh, and then I have some modern places because there are still wineries here. Uh, there's still uh, orchards here, which I'm doing some research on right now, including this orchard run by C.L. Mast, um, which was from 1891, if my memory serves. Uh, and uh, there's bits and pieces of it still there. I'm going to be... Um, giving that a look and go out and hike out there and see if I can find some of these orange trees that hopefully are still there. That's what I hear. Here's another one of the exhibits that I worked on, which is uh, miner's gear. And there's uh, some cool old stuff in your carbide headlamps. The uh, a time book from the Mary Harrison mine, which is one of the biggest mines here where Whistling Billy, the train outside, served there as uh, you know pulling ore cars and such. A sign from here's the quail mine. I love this candle lantern. Some guy made this out of a little pail, a tin pail, changed the handle to the top, 
punched a hole in it, stuck a candle in it. Voila! Instant candle lantern. I think that's super cute. And then there's these uh, great uh, candle holders that are uh, forged, you know, blacksmith forged. And you can use them either, you know, hang them uh, on a hook, you know, this way, or you can use the hook to hang something else and then drive that spike into the wall um, for use inside mines. And here's a couple more. And then here's a vintage 1940s fiberglass hard hat, one of the first hard hats, uh, with a carbide lamp on there. I like what they're doing with vertical space here. Um, they only have a very few items in the case itself, but, but the display is talking about the brick schoolhouse and gives history about it. Um, the pictures are interesting. It's well, it's well displayed. If you have this kind of room in a case uh, to be able to tell a story like this, um, I think this is well done. The fall, 12 to 16 feet per month. Oh, okay. It was what they wanted to, to fall. So what I'm filming actually is that you use the same system as we do, which is these screw-on fronts, which I, which I really hate because they're such a pain to get the whole front off. So when I change anything, you have to take off the entire front and get two people to piece move this giant piece of well, glass. That's real glass. Right? You have felt the pain <laughs> that when the curator, when the cur there's an assistant for Lee. You've got Lee's car. Her yeah, yeah. Lisa. And when she comes in, she's got to change light bulbs. Or right. It's like, oh no. And, and she grabs one of us and goes, "You're my helper today." Please. Right. Because you can't do this by <laughs> and, and yourself. The, it's the huge. The backing for these tends to strip. So if you see see some with Phillips heads. Or, yes, or I slotted, did notice that. It, yeah, yes. That, that's because the, we have the, the same in the thing. Back is, is stripped. We have the same <laughs> thing. And what they've done here smartly is um, any photographs are reproductions because that light up there is relatively intense and then there's also these ceiling lights um, that are also shining on this case. So any actual original photographs are going to get faded in quick order. Um, so there are artifacts in the box which is cool and fun to look at. Um, but the main thing is, is uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. And they, again, have been very clever about making these reproductions uh, mounted on card with uh, very clear signage. So very good. Back to Coulterville. New exhibit coming soon. Uh, we actually have covered this for a rose exhibit that uh, the Rose Committee is going to be doing. Very cool. And this is one of those cases that I was talking to the docent about in Columbia where it has uh, the front that screws into place that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's in a separate frame in another room. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's not easy, but uh, it is a secure way to, to uh, you know, created display. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, like, all that good internet type stuff. And I'll see you next time on Museums from the Inside Out.